country folk musician in Northern Arts. I love being on the road and I love being at home and leaving home is sometimes the most difficult thing to do. I'm by no means a converted countryman. I'm not a countryman. I'm still a townie. It's the ideal life. I'm on the road with the mentality of a townie and that sort of that drive and capacity to cope um, on the road. And I can come back here and, 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 and relax in all this. Hello, Sharon. We're arriving on, on the 16th, on the Wednesday. We're getting a Northwest Orient flight at 1.55, and it comes into Boston at 4 o'clock. Yeah, so if we, if we can stay that night <coughs> and fly out on the US Air from Boston to San Diego and do the first gig in Lucadia, is that 4.10 next afternoon? Yeah? OK. Then we'll see you around about 4 o'clock on the 16th. Okay. Bye then. Bye. Fifty percent of his time, sometimes even more, sometimes up to sixty, seventy-five percent of the year, he's away. It's not just in England; it's in the States and the continent. And he was away in the Far East, and I've done that too. And I know, not like some wives who think, "God, he's away partying every night." And I know what it's like on the road, and it's not like that at all. I do get lonely sometimes, but I, I knew what I was doing, and so I'm used to it now. Actually, I think I've got the best of both worlds, because when he's home, it's great, and when he's away, I can be as independent as possible. I couldn't have done any of this if I hadn't been born when I was. I was able to go to the troubadour in, in Earl's Court and see someone like Seamus Ennis. Someone who, although I didn't realise it at the time, actually changed my life. He was astounding. His playing was out of this world. His singing was what I found very confusing because it wasn't singing as I understood it. I understood singing to be, um, well, I was a chorister, you know. I was singing, um, the singing I understood was, was Orlando Gibbons, was Thomas Wilkes, and whether if it wasn't religious music, then it was Madrigal, where everything had to be absolutely spot on. And this man was telling a story. And it was not a way I understood at all. And yet, I mean, I, I went back for more. It wasn't a case of, oh, I had enough of that, going away from that. It was, it was fascination. And I just went along with it and found something that that I could do found something that I loved that I that I that I became more enamored of the more I became involved in it I mean it's it, it grew to be a passion in the very very early days of the folk revival People seem to think that if you sang English music, it had to be the fiddle or the concertina that, um, that you, you used as an accompaniment. Most guitarists on, uh, on the English scene were just really, um, it was an, an American style or a Spanish style. Martin evolved a style of English playing. The idea that you could accompany English ballads and uh, English songs with a guitar like that, I think fired an awful lot of people's imagination. I think it opened doors to an awful lot of, uh, of musicians to think, well, if you can do that with a guitar, we can do it with other instruments too. I think he is just about the most imitated guitarist on the folk scene. In 61, I was in a group called the Thameside Four, 
also in a group called the Three City Four in 64, going through to the beginning of 65. That was it up until Steel Eye. After Steel Eye, I was in the Albion Country Band for a while. That collapsed for lack of money. That was a good band. And then Steel Eye again in 77 for their supposed farewell tour. Then I leave out the Watersons because um, I don't know why. I, think, I don't think of the Watersons as, as in the same way as I think of all the other groups I've been involved in. The Watersons is a sort of lifetime commitment. And when I, I joined the Watersons in 73 to sing, uh, I joined Steel Eye but never left the Watersons. I'm actually able to sing solo the songs I love to do. I'm also allowed to play in a band the music I love to play, and I'm also allowed to sing in a group with my family in a way that I don't think can be bettered. Um, it's all part of the same thing, all part of the same privilege. I'm a very lucky person. I've never had, I've never even had to contemplate selling out. Never even had to come in. Can you imagine that? Not for one second have I ever had to contemplate selling out. And I don't know many people who've, who can say that. extraordinary thing. It has done a fantastic amount for me because it is so extraordinarily beautiful. And I think my job is to try and make other people understand how extraordinarily beautiful it is and try and make them understand that this is stuff that was written by just people like them. It's ordinary people's music. It's ordinary people's poetry. He's a storyteller. He knows how to put a story across. And also because he, he believes 100% in what he does. <laughs> 